bearings, angle of depression, and angle of elevation. But this here, find the angle of 180 degrees. Like, no, no, he's got a point. Technically, this little piece here is 180 degrees. <laughs> it's cute. So let's do bearings. Uh, bearings are something that we use on a compass. And if you don't know what a compass is, well, you probably use Google Maps or something else before, something like that. But they usually, even in maps programs, they show you this little, you know, thing like this. This is basically, it's supposed to be a little compass, a little magnet thing here. This here would be a north, this here would be the south. It's basically the direction that a north would point. That's really what this is. So we've defined this thing here straight up. We call it north. To the right, we call this east. You probably know these, but in case you didn't, there we go. Uh, this one here is called south, and this one over here is called west. Now we define some compass directions as well. So watch, we actually say this one right here we call it zero. And then what we do is we always go to the right. So we're always doing angles going around like this. And we start off at zero. So to the right, that is 90 degrees to the right. So we call this 90, right, 90 degrees. And straight south, that's 180 degrees. Straight west is 270 degrees. And straight up is 360 degrees, or zero. So you can call it zero or 360. This is how we do the compass directions normally. Now when we call a bearing, we just write it as a three-digit number. That's all. So bearing is just it's a three-digit number. So we tend to say something like, well, this could be 000, zero, zero I guess, or you could call it 360. Okay, and as I go over to the right like this here, what would this one be? This would be 090. That would be your bearing, which means if someone says, hey, head on a bearing of 090, then you know, ah, I'm going to head exactly east. If you head on a bearing of 180, do you notice it's just these same things, except we sometimes just remove the degree. We just say, you know, well, we write it as three digits. And we always go like this. We always go around. So, for example, one that's... Uh, you know, let's say going like this or here, so angle like this or here. If this angle from zero to over here is 45 degrees, we'd say you're heading on a bearing of zero, four, five. This is useful in navigation because if someone says, hey, why don't you head on a bearing of 300, then you might say, and by the way, I've used this when I was flying planes. Um, so for example, you might say, all right, well, head on a bearing of 300. And you might hear this on the radio. You might even be playing some games. There's an awesome game called uh, like Flight Simulator, for example, by Microsoft. But this is really used. This is used for real in flying. So if someone says, head on a bearing or, you know, do a heading of uh, 300. What that means then is that you know, ah, I've got to go, let's see, this is zero. So I know this here is 270. So 300 must be, you know, 30 degrees more. So this would be 45. So somewhere like, I don't know. Maybe like here, something like that. That would be a heading of 300, let's just say. That's because you're going, the angle is 300 degrees from the top as you go around. It's also useful in aviation, like I said, for runways. Turns out the runway's named, it's your bearing, just remove the last digit. So for example, if you're heading on, um, let's say you're going to go, I don't know, um, let me just make up some number here. So let's just pretend you're going to go ahead and you want to land on one that's heading straight south, for example, or, or something like this. So you want to head on something like this runway 180 like this right here. What we do, we take the last digit and we just remove it because we just make it one-tenth what it was. So this would be called runway 18, for example. We might say that's that might be runway 18. Now, if there's two of them, we might say 18L or 18R for left and right. Because when you're flying in the air, you want to be able to know which runway you're on, right? So what's interesting about it is the runway name tells you which direction you're heading when you land there. Which means if I'm going to land on, hen on runway 18, what does that mean? That means in order to land on that one, I'm going to be, let's see, facing exactly south. So I know on a map now, I know that if I have a runway like this right here, this is north, this is south, I know that if I'm you know, flying down that way, that's the one I'm going to reach when I reach uh, runway 18. And it's going to look like this. It's backwards right now just because when I'm landing on it, it'll look like it. Maybe that'll be simpler to explain like this. This one right here that you can see here, this is a real picture taken. So someone's coming in. They're actually overshooting the runway here probably because you wouldn't want to see it that high like this unless you're coming straight down on it or almost. But see, it's runway 27. What does that tell you? 
runway 27, it means it's actually got an angle of, you know, you're doing a heading of 270, which means you're going to be heading exactly west. That means now I know you're heading west here. And the cool part is that the other end of the runway, if you think about it, there is going to be another way to land, depending on how the wind goes. That's going to be runway 09, because it's 090. It's really cool how it works. Maybe when you're flying in an airplane, um, you know, sometimes you can see the video of what the pilot sees. Sometimes I show that. As you're coming in on the runway next time, take a look. If you're lucky enough to be flying in an airplane, take a look and see. You'll see as you come in for a landing, you'll see the runway number. They all have numbers like this. If you see 27, ah, it's 270, I'm heading west. So you can sort of know that. All right. We have things called angle of depression. That's just the angle below the horizon. The horizon is a straight line across from you. So maybe we'd say, ah, this right here would be this angle. This is the angle of depression. Similarly, if you're sitting there watching something, well, this is the angle above the horizon. It's called the angle of elevation. And then we can use some trigonometry to figure things out. In Copenhagen, there's this, uh, they like their beer company, so they've got Tuborg, for example. They've got this big, giant bottle. It's actually really close to where I have a little office space here. So I see this every morning on my bike ride, because uh, from where I live, everybody in Denmark likes to bike. So I'm biking every day to work. I pass by this all the time, this little tower up here. So let's just pretend you see the uh, giant Tuborg bottle in front of you, and the sun is at an angle of elevation of 35 degrees. So what does that mean? That means, well, you've got this bottle here. I'm not very good at drawing, as you can see here, but let's just pretend this is a big bottle here. Um, when the sun is at an angle of elevation of 35 degrees, that means that you have something like this going on. Let's see, so I'll draw myself some sort of angle like this, maybe, and I'll do some other. This is called trigonometry. I'm going to use triangles to figure stuff out. But it's kind of cool. You can figure out real stuff. So this could be a real example where if you go ahead and measure the angle here, you could say, ah, well, when the sun is at 35 degrees, you could use a protractor to measure that. You could sit there and measure, all right, so from the ground, let's just pretend here it's 35 degrees. Then you know that the shadow is 37 meters long. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that there's this length right here, this length right here. Let's just assume it's from the center, okay? We're going to not make it too complicated here. We're going to make a nice triangle. We're going to assume this is 37 uh, meters. The question is, what's the height? Maybe I'll call this H, H for the height. Do you see I can use trigonometry now for this? I can just sit there and think, huh, okay, well, I'm going to name my angles. One of these right here, this one here is 90 degrees. Opposite to that, I'm going to call that my hypotenuse, hype. Opposite to my angle is going to be op. That means this here must be adjacent. Now, which of these don't I know? I don't know hypotenuse, so I'm going to try to ignore that. And I'm going to then use so ka toa to figure out which one I need. Well, I don't have h, I don't have hypotenuse, so I can't do this one. I can't use this one. I must therefore use tangent. All right, so I'll say fine then. So I know the tangent of the angle is going to be the opposite over adjacent, just to show you all the steps. You can always skip this step when you know what you're doing. Therefore, I can say, maybe I'll do this in black. Therefore, I'll say that the tangent of 35 degrees is going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be opposite, so that's h, which I don't know, over adjacent, which is 37. Well, to get h by itself, then, I just multiply both sides by 37, so I have 37 times tangent of 35. Let me do that on my trusty calculator. Remember to put it in degrees. Uh, so here we go. I'm just going to go 37 times uh, tangent of 35. And I end up with an answer of 25.9 if I do it to three significant figures. Okay, so 25, 25.9 meters tall. So see, you can figure out things in real life based on trigonometry. So, you know, when you say, like, when is this useful? This whole chapter is basically, this topic here is, like, it's all useful. This you could use, we use this in astronomy to figure out the distance to a star by not actually going to it. We can use some trigonometry like this. Now, if you want, you can stop the video right now because that's the end of what you really needed, okay? So now we're, we're kind of done. But I wanted to show you something extra. If you're up for it, I want to show you something really neat. So 
you can stop the video. This is the end of what's sort of needed for the course, but I thought it'd be fun to show you something extra. So I said, just for fun, just say no. I don't think you'll be tested on this, but I don't know, this is way too cool to not show you. I just thought, like, oh, I have to show you this. So let's say you want to navigate by the stars. Keep in mind, this works in the northern hemisphere. So if you live, you know, north of the equator, uh, this trick will work. If you live south of the equator, there is a harder trick. There's not just one star you have to find. You have to use something called, uh, was it the Southern Cross? I think you use Gacrux and you use um, Alpha Centauri. And you, you basically figure out an invented sort of, you make like a triangle and sort of figure out where the south is. But in the northern hemisphere, we're very lucky. There's a star that's extremely close to being exactly north. So here's the thing. If you want to navigate using the stars, which is something I've learned how to do, um, you have to know where you're facing and you have to know where you are. So I'm going to show you the first thing, how to know where you're facing. I'm going to show you part of knowing where you are. So let's do this. So stars, they can help us, but here's the problem. They move around. These are pictures taken um, over a long period of time. So it looks like they smear around. So it's just so you can see if you took this picture, you know, you left the camera going for like an hour or something, you'll see these big smears of stars like this. This is really what happens. That's because the stars don't move, the Earth moves, okay, so we're spinning. So that's the problem. You can't just point to a star and say, oh, I'll walk towards that one, because it depends on the time. That star might be going like really crazy, like, uh-oh, what's going on? I mean, it'll go. So you can only navigate if you know what the stars are going to do. So you need to find the North Star. So first things first, you need to find a constellation in the sky called Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper. Um, in Danish, they call it Kautzvon. To be. So this one here, do you notice this one here? It kind of looks like, notice it's kind of like this right here. Some people say this looks like some kind of, I mean, Ursa Major means large um, bear, or like big bear. But to me, it looks like a saucepan. That's what it actually looks like in the sky. Okay, so when you look at this, you need to be able to find this in the sky. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's pretty easy to find. These are nice, bright stars. So that's the first step. you got to find it. Next step you got to use those pointer stars. So here it is. Here's Ursa Major. And the way I think of it is if it's a saucepan, imagine you're sort of dipping, you know, like if you're going to pour, wouldn't some sauce pour out of this thing now? So those are your two pointer stars. These two stars right here, they point. So like we go up that way. It's not exactly straight, but it's mostly straight. You get a fairly bright star. That's the North Star. It's called Polaris. Okay, so Polaris is the North Star. So what do you do then? You find Ursa Major, you find the Big Dipper, you use those two pointer stars, and it's almost straight, and you find this big star there, this bright-ish star, that's the North Star. That means if you stand towards it, so now you face that thing, so you're actually sitting outside, and you face towards that thing, now you're facing north, which means to your right is east, to your, you know, behind you is south, and to your left is west. So now we've done one of the key parts about stellar navigation. you got to know which way you're facing. Now you can tell. By the way, we've learned some really cool things in the military. It turns out, to, depending on where you are, if you know about uh, the forests, turns out where mushrooms grow uh, is different. Depending on north and south, they tend to like to grow in certain directions. So it's, it's, there's other clever ways. But at night, at least, if you're in northern hemisphere, there you go. Now, here's a quiz time. So I have these different images here. And see if you can find it. So this left one right here. Can you find where the north star is? Step one, find the Big Dipper. Did you find it? Big Dipper's here. Here's the Big Dipper. And that means then you use your pointer stars like this right here. And what do they point to? Here's the North Star. Okay. How about over here? Because sometimes it's upside down. Do you notice that this time, depending on the time of day, maybe it's upside down. Do you see here's the Big Dipper here, but it's upside down? So where are the pointer stars? They go that way. So where's the... This right here is the North Star. Do you see that? Now, how about this one? Find Polaris here. Can you find Ursa Major? Can you find the Big Dipper? I'm being kind of a jerk. It's not here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is not to be a jerk. It's because sometimes, depending on where you live, maybe you don't see it. Or maybe, depending on the time, maybe um, the Big Dipper is actually set. It's below the horizon. So keep in mind, it's not such a jerk thing to do. So if you look in the sky and you see the Big Dipper, great. You know, then you're in business, then you can actually do it. See? So 
that's just me being a slight jerk here, but just to try to show you that here was the Big Dipper, here was the Big Dipper here, you could see it in the sky, right? There it was, and here, it wasn't there. In fact, what do you see here? This is actually Orion. This is actually one called Orion. Here he's a hunter, he's supposed to have a bow here. That's called Orion. There's a cool star, this one's called Beetlejuice, it's got a really cool name. This one here is uh, the big dog. I've seen it sort of drawn like this here, it's called Canis Major. You can sort of like imagine some sort of dog's head here. This one right here is actually the small dog, it's called Canis Minor. It's just two stars, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so keep in mind though, sometimes you just, you can't see them. In the Northern Hemisphere, the Orion is really easy to find, it's really, really bright. In any case, let's go a step further. Not only can you, with North Star, can you tell where you're pointing, you can tell your latitude. So we break up the Earth into northern and southern hemispheres, these half circles. And depending on where you live, we, we have these coordinates. We say latitude. This is like how far north you are or south. In this case, it's going to help you find your northness. Turns out, Polaris's angle above the horizon tells you your latitude, which is so cool. So what that means is this. Think, if you're sitting right at the North Pole, where will the North Star be? It'll be exactly above you. Do you see it? It'll be straight up, so the angle will be 90 degrees. Whereas if you're sitting on the equator, that zero right here, the north will be exactly, you know, sort of straight. It'll be like straight up that way, like this. But if you're sitting on the equator, that's going to be exactly at zero degrees for you. It's going to be right on the horizon. So it turns out the angle above the horizon is your latitude. So here's an image that someone took. It's beautiful. Um, and you can see that, oh, well, this thing right here, do you see? You can figure out, if you can figure out that angle above the horizon, turns out that tells you your latitude. So you can know something about your position as well. Longitude, by the way, is way harder, but uh, latitude is, is quite easy. So here's a little trick for you. Turns out your outstretched fist is 10 degrees. It means if you put your fist out like this, okay, so you hide your thumb, it doesn't matter so much, and you hold your fist out in front of you. So you start at the horizon. So let's say, just say you're, you're measuring this right here, right? So you can say, all right, the horizon is uh, straight across like this right here. Let's say the North Star is right here. You would sit there and measure. Okay, well, I put my fist here, you know, sort of, because you want to measure this angle right here like this. You want to measure what's, what's that angle here, theta. You want to figure out that angle. This is Polaris here, the North Star. Well, it turns out a nice little trick is your hand outstretched is about 10 degrees. And you might think, ah, but what if I have really big hands? Yeah, you tend to also have really long arms. It scales kind of nicely. It's, it's, it's not exact, it depends, but it's very, very close to that. So if you're really short and you have small hands, no problem. Your small hands will be closer to you. It'll still be about 10 degrees. So if you hold your hands out, I mean, it's hard for me to do with the camera like this, but if you hold your hand out, there's about 10 degrees. So where I live in Copenhagen, for example, uh, in Denmark, when I find Polaris, I see it. It's sort of, it's up fairly high in the sky. In fact, I can hold up my fist, and I've tried it out, and I've shown my daughter this. She thinks it's hilarious. We hold out our fist, and you can go one, two, three, four. I go five fists and about half of another fist, so about 55 degrees. And it, it's really quite accurate, and that tells you we're at 55 degrees north. That's how I, you know, we can tell our latitude. So where we live in Denmark, for example, which is, according to this map, I don't know, like, Somewhere up here, they drew Denmark really bad, but somewhere up here, look, 45, 60, yeah, we're about 55. So then take a guess, and from this picture then, where do you think this picture could have been taken? Do you notice this is a place here where the, this is the North Star here, somewhere in here, and this is a, you know, long exposure. This is a picture uh, that was taken somewhere fairly low in latitude. Why is that? Because this isn't very high in the sky. It's not like it's straight up. So this is actually taken in Hawaii. So that tells you, ah, they're somewhat close to the equator. That's why I see this angle wouldn't be very high. By contrast, this is a beautiful picture taken uh, near Tromsø in uh, northern Norway. And do you notice this one here? We see these star sort of smears like we saw before, these sort of things. But do you notice we can't see where they start? That's because it's way, 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 way up high. In other words, if you live here in northern Norway, the North Star is very close to straight up. Not quite, but it's, it's pretty close to straight up. Well, that's because your latitude is very high. Isn't that kind of cool? So you might wonder, like, when will I use this stuff? Well, here's how you can use this stuff, right? You can use trigonometry and triangulation to do all sorts of really awesome stuff.